Good morning, everybody. We are here in San Clemente with uh, Michael Luna, the architect for the our newest project in San Clemente. I have Monica Westphal, Chief Operating Officer uh, for Rise Paradise, and myself, Monty Gambard. Uh, good morning, both of you. How are you, Hello, Michael Luna? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good, to good, see morning. You good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so um, this uh, this podcast will be we, we will uh, put more emphasis on the actual beautiful building that you designed in San Clemente and it's actually coming along very nicely. I, uh, I, 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 I absolutely love it and I think the neighborhood and the surrounding community uh, adores it because it's uh, it was a vacant land for what 30 40 years? Uh, yes at least yeah that long for sure. So uh, and uh, to kind of uh, backtrack a little bit it's been uh, seven years since I met you is that right? Hard to believe. Right? Hard to believe. So um, I, I met Michael Luna through the um, broker who sold me the property because Michael Luna apparently was involved in a previ- with a previous owner of the property for some office buildings, I know, and that never went through. And then went back on the market and then uh, I purchased the, the, the parcel and then I was introduced to Michael Luna and then we started to work on this. And maybe it's uh, it, it was more complicated than I thought, and I knew nothing about it. And maybe that's a good thing because uh, had I known that this uh, has to go through the Coastal Commission and all that, that, maybe I wouldn't engage in such uh, obstacle. But uh, I'm glad I did, and I think the building that you designed is very pretty. So let me Thank kind you. of uh, put uh, the ball in your court and ask you a few questions about this project. Let me. You know, when when I met with you and I told you what uh, my objective here and asked you and told you, look, I want to put a building here that will make a statement. Did you feel any challenges that you felt like, oh, how do I approach this? What I do? Have you ever had to design an assisted living facility? Is this your first one? And if so, what were your challenges with my expectations? So, I, I, uh, indeed, this was the first assisted uh, living facility of this size. Uh, but you, when, you, when you made it clear that you wanted this to be the, the scale of a very high-end resort feel, like a high-end hotel, I could absolutely relate to that because I've worked on many of those in my career. So uh, when you mentioned that and you wanted to do it right and you wanted to, to really do it in an upscale type of approach and quality throughout, uh, a cut above the rest in your competition. It was just really clear that it, that I thought it was a really good fit for us to work together. Um, uh, I've worked on high-end hotels for a long, long time, and uh, any time a client comes to me and says they want to do a quality job, they want to be a cut above the competition, then it would becomes a, actually for me a very easy project. Okay. Uh, just in my comfort zone. It's when clients want to cut corners mm-hmm. and they want to do cheaply, then I think most architects' interests go down. Those that are, that are you know, mostly concerned with doing a really nice project. And, uh, and I certainly wanted to be a part of that. And so I thought your program was off to a great start. So did you have any challenges with my requests or my uh, kind of ideas to what I, I, I presented to you? Did, was there any hesitations how to do this, what to do? Because, because you mentioned you never did uh, an assisted living. So I, mean, I don't know, maybe you didn't have any challenges. I don't know. Well, the, uh, every project uh, has challenges, and this certainly uh, was, was no different. Um, you know, our parcel was not as much land as I would have liked for the program that we were contemplating. Uh, we had to, to, to squeeze quite a little, quite a bit of things into the project. And so, uh, and so the land was a little, you know, rather limited. And of course, always with most, most projects in San Clemente, it's always a challenge uh, on a regulatory basis in terms of getting our approvals and so forth and the development cl- um, environment that we have to deal with uh, in San Clemente. Uh, So we had to make some decisions early on to uh, make sure that we designed something that was going to be acceptable not only to yourself as my client, but to the the city and all of their rules and guidelines, and in addition to that, to the community, that it would be something that they would support and like and get behind as well so that we can reduce the amount of opposition opposition to a to a project like this have you ever have you 
so I know your previous project, you, I don't know why, but for some reason you did not have to go in front of the Coastal Commission. It was kind of sort of approved right by, by, by right, or I'm not sure how it went. Well, it had to go to the Coastal Commission, but um, at that time, and, and I'll tell you, the, uh, governmental agencies are always just seem to be a moving target. The rules and uh, guidelines that they put forth seem to be under constant uh, change and ev evolution and so forth. But typically things get more difficult, they don't get easier. Mm -hmm. But indeed, the first project that we uh, designed on this site, a twin office building, uh, couldn't have sailed through the uh, Coastal Commission in the city any easier. Um, and so uh, it was uh, quite different than the mountains that uh, they put in front of us that we, that we climbed. So now that the building is coming up, <clears throat> and, and actually we can actually physically walk into it and kind of get the feeling for the building. What is, and then we were there earlier, uh, what is one thing, if I, if, if I was to ask you, what is the one thing that you find most um, excited about or most proud about that building? And listen, the, the overall building, don't get me wrong, is beautiful. It really is. I, I, I love coming, every Thursday I go there, I come here, it's like a, a little kid going to Disneyland. I'm very excited. But, if I was to tell you, name me one thing that you feel as the architect, right, that you're proud of designing, designing this building, what would you say? I, I would have to say it's the, uh, the indoor-outdoor relationship that we achieve. Even though we had a smaller project, uh, the outdoors, excuse me, the indoors connected very well to the outdoors with our large common decks and terraces and rooftop deck. Uh, everything that I do and most all of my work is all about uh, creating the indoor and outdoor living capability in terms of that shared uh, experience. Uh, when you're inside, you feel like you're part of the outside with nice big doors that open up to terraces and decks and views. And when you're outside, you feel like you're still part of the architecture. So I'm really proud that I was able to, I think, achieve that uh, indoor-outdoor relationship uh, the feeling of spaciousness, it doesn't feel cramped, it doesn't feel tight or, or confining. Uh, I, I really like uh, the, the, the way that it feels very open. That's, that's what I think that I really set out to do, and I'm excited that I think we really achieved a lot of that. You know, um, Michael, you mentioned uh, the feel and the design that you put together. You're part of San Clemente, obviously, and you're, you've done a lot here in the city. What was something that kind of set you uh, to stand this community apart, given that we had approached you or and said, we want to design or we want something to serve the seniors of San Clemente? What was something that you thought you would incorporate into the design of this community? Well, um, the project is considered a gateway site. The city uh, has designated uh, certain parcels in town, and typically they're around freeway off-ramps, the arrival points of, of, this, of this city. So being a gateway site, it had to be exemplary. It had to be a real uh, statement for San Clemente. Mm -hmm. So it was an opportunity to really, okay, now I, I, I've got a project at a gateway uh, that requires just you know the cut above the step above in terms of real spanish architecture when when moti came to me said i want this spanish and looking at his other properties that were spanish as well so i had a good client to to that understood the spanish vernacular and i've got the you know, requirements from the city to make really good spanish architecture it was an opportunity for me to really kind of put everything that i've learned about spanish architecture into one project and and uh, uh, meet the city's objectives, meet my own design criteria, have it really be authentic Spanish architecture, and take care of the client's program as well and, and put it all together into a project. And I think that's something we've been able to do. So do you feel that this, obviously Moti and I are very excited about the design and what we what you've created, do you feel that this is something that the residents of San Clemente are going to love and enjoy having in their city? I, I think so, definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 
just during our processing process with the city, um, while we were getting our entitlements, um, there, the city made it clear there's a real need for this type of use. Yeah. Um, and so I think the community, they showed straight off very early on in the process that this is something they wanted. And now that we've got great, you know, we've shown that this is really true, a great looking project in the community. Uh, we've got the use and the looks of the project and the quality. Um, I think that they, uh, they're, they're, they're going to love it. Not, not only now, but in the future for, yeah. for generations. To I come. can tell you firsthand from just taking the phone calls that it's not even we're not even done with you know what it's actually going to look like. We only have a shell up, and there's quite quite a bit of interest. Oh, that's from awesome! Our so you're families. getting calls Absolutely. already and so forth. Absolutely. Actually, you have a on February 18th. She has what do you call it? Sneak and peek, or what? So do you call it? we have because we've been getting the high interest of uh, families calling. Uh, we put together our first sneak peek, uh, which is on uh, February 18th, and uh, we slotted between 9 and 3, um, given all the COVID precautions and what have you not. We allotted uh, two families to come um, in, in a one-hour span, so myself and sales associates uh, spread apart, and every slot was filled. Uh, wow. So we took uh, another day, uh, which is on the next event, will be April 3rd, which is a Saturday, and we've already had five slots taken from that day. So wow. there is quite a bit of interest. Well, and that's awesome. uh, anybody who calls is specifically excited about where it's at um, and interested in seeing what it's going to look like on the inside. So You know, the, uh, the fact that you guys have done such uh, great work already to put together the brochures, the computer images, and, yeah. you know, thank goodness we have the technology today to, to really show people what it's going to really look like digitally yes. and so forth uh, in terms of the computer-generated models of what the spaces are going to feel like when you're inside them and so forth. And they're so realistic. They, yeah. they, you know, they're absolutely the image of of what our design team has has visioned. And so, um, it's great that you know. I, I think most anybody seeing those brochures are going to really say, "Wow, this is really a step up yeah. from probably the other products." Yeah, seen. actually, seeing a brochure and like when we started to work with you <clears throat> initially a few years back, and you put the actually the schematic design together, it all looks beautiful on paper, but now that the building is actually up and you can actually walk into the common areas, into the bedrooms, onto the roof deck, that beautiful, I mean, uh, that view is just, you can't replicate it, you know? It's unbelievable up I, there. I, I, you know, sometimes I'm thinking things are meant to be, and sometimes, I, you know, before I purchase this property, Monica knows, because I took her, um, my realtor took me to a lot of places. And somehow I landed on this one. And I think it's because it was just meant to be. And, I, I, and I'm thinking, how he, with all the challenges, you know, with, with, like you said, the parcel is kind of an awkward shape. It's in a coastal zone. Uh, it's not that big. We had to comply with parking and so many other things. But we were able, you were able put something that will very boutique and very high end in this very specific zone or this parcel that is very limited in space that I, I think is going to be very unique and, it, and, and it, this will be beautiful forever. Something that is classic is always pretty. Yeah, I and agree. I think you design a beautiful building. Well, good design is timeless, and yep. and and I, I I do think that we have very good architectural design that's been put forward, and but realistically, my design is really uh, not too meaningful if we don't have the great interiors, yep. the interior design, and the fact that we've had this collaboration between the design team uh, to work together to create this. Um, uh, PDNA top top professionals in the interior design business. It's been just great working alongside them to, uh, to 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 bring all of this into into clear focus of what it can be. But it's going to stand out. It really I, is. I, I can't yeah. wait to have it done, uh, completed and, and host a, a beautiful open house and, and showcase this to the city, to the neighborhood, to to potential residents, yeah. to staff, to our staff members. But um, I want to backtrack for a second and ask you. So if you have to, and, and I don't know if I may have asked you this before or not, but what is one of your biggest challenges with this project? 
Well, um, I think the, the biggest challenge has been the, uh, uh, the processing, uh, the, the entitlement processing uh, to get things approved through the governmental agencies. That, that's been pretty tough. Um, but we did overcome and uh, got that done. Yep. Um, Actually, I was just up, up until recently, uh, the Orange County Fire Authority just pulled the back their permit and we had to fight with them again. Yeah, so indeed. They, you know, you never know what they're gonna do. It's yeah. a surprise every day. Yeah, no doubt. It just gets more difficult over time uh, in terms of the regulatory process. Um, it always just gets harder, never easier. But specifically, design-wise, um, I, I think the difficult. Uh, you know, if you look at the site and you look at the building that that we've created, it it is. It's monumental, it fits the corner really well, but the, the real challenge, I think, uh, was, uh, I think, trying to get all of the components that we really needed. We needed a quality uh, exercise room, you know, a lot of program. We had a lot of program. We wanted to have all the right amenities and so forth, and we had to make sure that these things fit really properly. But getting back to my point about the indoor-outdoor relationship, you know, we've very carefully designed the rooms around a central um, kind of common living area that that in that space opens out to the views and to the terraces and the courtyards really nicely. So again, that indoor-outdoor relationship I think it was probably the biggest challenge, uh, but it was top priority for me to have the, you know, there aren't very many um, properties and particularly assisted living facilities that have an ocean view like yeah, what we have absolutely yeah I think and there's only so much ocean view there's only so much coastline yeah and there's there's only so many properties that are zoned to allow for this use with that kind of view and so con consequently you know the challenge was really to take advantage of the views yep uh, as as best as we could, and and I think we've achieved that. Those common areas, uh, that common living area that flows out to the decks out of uh, from every every sleeping room, flows out onto a a nice uh, internal living room, and that spills out nicely to an exterior space. Great indoor outdoor connection. One thing I do want to mention that I absolutely love about this project, if you really pay attention to this project, we do not have hallways that's very true hallways yeah. usually is a waste of space and yeah, we have yeah. no hallways we have common areas and all the rooms are off of the common areas and yeah. i think that makes this because we were so tight on space we had to get creative and i think this creativity brought us to something so unique to the point where we were able to accomplish um a, a building where we were able to fit everything in and, and, and by eliminating these hallways. You know, I mean, listen, if you think about hallways and you go to a hotel and you have these hallways and rooms side to side, it gives you this industrial, not industrial, but the institutional feel. Institutional, yeah, yeah for and sure. And here you don't have it. You know, you come in and it's your, you have a living room, uh, you have four living rooms, right? Yeah. And every living room or every one of those four living rooms has their own set of rooms that, that come out of this living room. So I think I mean, just everything it came out literally, to my view, it's perfect. It really is perfect. You know, um, in addition to those living rooms that spill out onto decks, there's this great dining room. Yes, amazing. So that, that room just feels really good. I With a beautiful view. Yes, gorgeous views. That rooftop deck. Oh, that, yeah, that's I mean, a whole different story. It's, it's, uh, it's panoramic up Absolutely. there. There's a lot of blue water up there, a lot of blue water. I'm very actually proud of this. I'm very happy that we got you on this project. I must say, you know, Thank at first, you. Thank at first you. It's I, you been know, my pleasure. Yeah, and, yeah. and let me tell you, I, I did not know you. Uh, they told me, hey, call Michael Luna. I don't know who Michael Luna is, right? <laughs> but I said, hey, you, sometimes in life you just have to trust your intuition. And I did. And, uh, you know, I just said, well, let's go with it. And I remember I even have your first, first, first draft. And you uh -huh. came to me and said, hey, what do you think about this? And I looked at it and I said, Hmm, this looks like completely different than what what I pictured. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Uh, this was just the elevation, and and, and I, I absolutely loved it. And I said, yeah, I think we can move on with this. And, I, I and, he, I, and he just grew from there. I think I think we got off uh, on the on the right track early on. Yeah, early on. It was I, the I right kind of 
direction. Yeah, yeah. But but I tell you, it's uh, the difference on really most any, really for all of the projects that an architect typically does, is when you have a good client, quite honestly, Moti, uh, with your vision and your vision of quality, uh, the selection of this wonderful site, your commitment to capturing the views as well, and, and to do this right, period. And that's been your motto since day one. And uh, it doesn't matter what myself or the design team, the rest of the design team uh, does. If we don't have the right vision to start with, then it's not. it couldn't have been what it is today. Thank you, yes. That's for sure. But I think it's not Moti. I think it's the entire team. Well, I Moti can have all the visions in the world, but no, if you have the I'm wrong sorry, architect... No, I'm sorry, Moti. It, it, uh, well, th- something to be said for that as well. But quite honestly, um, uh, any architect that, that you know has uh, the ability to design and to see things creative, uh, creatively, which most architects do, um, you know, quite honestly, I think that um, it really does start with a client's vision. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I, I'm very, I, I must tell you, I'm very proud of this project. I'm proud you've been on, involved in this project. And I'm so proud of this project. And that sometimes I'm very anal about this project because this project is literally my stepping stone because I have to. I'm not talking about anyone else. It's a, prov- it's a proven project for myself. I have a vision and I want to make sure I accomplish that vision. That's why I'm so picky as to what I want and what I don't want in there. Well, your vision and your dream is coming into reality real fast. Yeah, and hopefully hopefully we'll be able to celebrate this and, and, and I'm sure you will be there with whoever you want to bring up, uh, along with you. But uh, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very, very happy that... Uh, it, listen, it took us a long time, but that's part of the process, I guess, right? But I think... Um, I, 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 I'm very, I couldn't be happier. You know, listen, every project has its challenges, ups and downs, it hurdles, this and that. But overall, when you... When you fast forward five years from now and you see the end product and you forget about everything else, you really write, wow, you know, this uh, was... Moda, you're never going to forget all of the details <laughs> on this job. You know, I take, pic- <laughs> I take a lot of pictures and, and I actually, for, for all my projects... None I, of uh, us will forget. Yeah, None of yeah. us will forget. It, and quite honestly, what a treat it has been for me and an honor to be associated with this project. Uh, it's not, you know, every day that a client comes along and wants to do things absolutely first class. Yeah. And uh, that's what this project uh, is going to be. For the for for the record, I if anybody um, if anybody is looking for somebody who has a great vision for uh, I I don't know your your specialty, but I can tell you one thing from what I know. Michael Luna has a great eye and a great vision for perfect hacienda style, Spanish style. And you can add more to this because I'm not an architect, so I don't know the right. Uh, vocabulary or you know so but he is definitely one to you know actually today at the site when I was sitting there on the roof and Tom was sitting with me and I told him look at those little things and he told me yep that's Michael's signature (laughs) you know so I'm very actually happy and proud that you are on this project and uh, hopefully this is the stepping stone to many more projects on this caliber and on this level and this style. Awesome. It would be an honor to, to work with you again on another project. Thank for sure. you. Monica, is there anything you would like to add? Or Michael Luna, do you have anything else to add that you would like to, to before we conclude this podcast? I, I think it's really, really critical to, um, again, stress. Uh, it is really through your vision. Uh, it is because of your vision uh, that I think we're going to have a monument uh, and a place for... Uh, retired citizens that uh, are looking for a quality living environment in their latter part of the years, uh, that I see this place as really being second to none. I really do. I think it's really going to be outstanding. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate the beautiful design and can't wait to uh, Thank you. have a, the families and residents of San Clemente enjoy and, and it. Enjoy this beautiful building. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for our next podcast.